Vow of the Disciple is like if Bungie thought the part that everyone liked about raids was picking up relics. I mean, I guess that part is kind of cool. So what's cooler than one relic? Two relics. I'll do you one better. Three relics. Let's go. The Upended Summit is a tough five to six minute gauntlet filled with non-stop ad spawns, multiple relics being juggled, and, you guessed it, lots of symbol callouts. Team composition here is pretty open. While you will want things for non-stop killing of enemies, survivability is also a factor in a couple of unique parts of the fight. A well or two isn't a terrible idea with Phoenix Protocol, for having a designated spot for your team to group up and recombobulate after reading symbols and killing a bunch of stuff. Otherwise, crowd control, roaming supers, even one-off supers all work here. Get a feel for the encounter in order to tune to your specific needs. There are no bosses here, but there are more glyph keepers, so weaponry for killing both tons of adds and the glyph keepers are great. Be wary of rockets. While they are good, one of the relics can block rocket shots and will make you explode yourself. Fusion rifles worked for me, Osteo Striga for ad clear worked for me, Trinity Ghoul is probably good, swords might be good here too. Just again, be careful with rockets. Some form of overload stuns will also be needed here. The fight starts when you pick up the first relic, which is, for lack of a better term, the Nut Laser from Leviathan Dog Encounter and or Last Wish's Shuro Chi boss fight. Each relic has their own job to perform. The Nut Relic's job is to kill the Shielded Taken Knight that will spawn in. The Shielded Knight extends your survival timer. You start each section with 1 minute and 15 seconds on the clock, with each knight kill giving you a big chunk of time back. In this first room, it's not really a big deal, but in later rooms, it is crucial to success, as if that timer runs out, you all die. While this first knight spawns right away, I believe all future knights will spawn after glyph keepers are killed, but just keep a lookout for them in case I'm wrong there. In this first room, you will have two glyph keepers, one per side. Each of them will have three symbols spawn above them when killed. The person with the relic is the only person who can read the one on the right. Each set of three will have one symbol in common with each other. The symbol is the one that you need to shoot on the doorway in order to progress. So if the left side symbols are light, commune, and kill, and then the right side has darkness, kill, and witness, kill is the common one between the two that you then shoot to progress to the next room. These in-between rooms are also a place to regroup and get a fresh timer, but you will need to deposit relics into slots in these rooms, and other people need to pick them up, as dropping a relic at any point will incur a 30 second lockout from picking up any of them. So once you pick one up, you're gonna be committed to it. Note that all of the relics have unlimited ammo, so make sure you're using them. This second room adds the VOG relic on top of the nut relic, and it does what a VOG relic does. It cleanses. Yes, in all remaining rooms, you will be gathering stacks of pervading darkness, and the relic holder needs to cleanse it off of everyone, as 10 stacks is death. The nut holder from room 1 will drop it into a slot in the in-between room, and someone else must pick it up. The team will now need to split into groups, because the room splits in half with a significant amount of enemies spawning in non-stop. You might be able to just zerg around as a team, but my team split apart, we didn't really try a group zerg. People will also be jumping back and forth to read symbol callouts. If you can see symbols, you need to call them because not everyone is gonna be able to see every group of symbols. Not only that, but there are now two waves of glyph keepers. So you need to do the first wave like you did the first room, remember which symbol is the common one, then you do another set of symbols, get the common symbol for that set, and then shoot both common symbols on the next doorway to be let in. The Taken Knight spawns in the final corridor to the next safe room. That's what you need to be keeping in mind when that timer starts to run low. Remember, they only spawn in after Glyph Keepers die. You'll enter the next safe room, which will have a set of late spawning Screebs, so don't get ahead of yourself. You will then deposit both the Relic and the Nut, and in comes a new challenger, the Eye of Riven. 
Both the VOG Relic and the Nut will be placed into their slots, new people will scoop them, and then a third will pick up the Eye of Riven. Something else to note is that the timer refreshes when a Relic is dropped into a slot. So as soon as someone drops a Relic into a slot, you just need to motor. You need to pick up all the other Relics and go. The Eye of Riven dispels what was formerly the immune mechanic in Gambit. There's a big darkness ball making a bunch of targets immune. You need to run up to the ball and hit your grenade on it to dispel it. The Eye of Riven, much like the VOG Relic, will be ping-ponging back and forth between sides, dispelling immunities, while the Relic dispels people's darkness. This third room is also much larger than the previous, so speed and communication are important. You still need to do two sets of Glyph Keepers as well. We had two Guardians go right, and then the Nut and one Guardian go left as you enter the main part of this room in order to start clearing. The location of the immunity tethers shifts in between every attempt. There are set locations where they spawn, but otherwise it is random in which spots they end up spawning. So keep a lookout as to where you need to go first. Watch those immunity tethers for a hint. The Nut Knight always spawns in the same place though, which is on a pillar out in the middle of the arena. You'll progress up multiple sets of stairs here on both sides, climbing all the way up. Be aware of Stalker Grenades and Hobgoblins as they both hurt really badly. Try to utilize a Well or a Ward in these tougher spots. Also, try to get as much high ground as quickly as possible. It makes things much, much easier to manage. The Nut Relic needs to remember about the Knight way down low though. Be sure to call out when Glyph Keepers are dying. And again, do not forget about your Symbol Callouts. You're gonna have one more safe room, but no new relics. You got Screebs as you enter, be careful, and then do your swaps. It's the same idea in this section as well. Look for taken immunity nodes and cleanse them. When you first enter this final room, try not to stay clogged up at the entrance, as it is just a magnet for grenades. Feel free to enter with a super if you have one. Basically any roaming super will work, ward, well, whatever. The Nut Knight will spawn on the big platform in the middle of the room. Again, be sure to call that out. Keep comms as clear as possible. It's going to be very hectic with all the callouts, but do your best. If you don't need to say anything, don't say anything. Progress forward, kill Glyph Keepers, try to get rid of some Hobbs as well. They hurt pretty bad. And just don't forget about the Screebs in the final safe room. Here's an example of a room on contest mode. Normal mode is hopefully not going to be as chaotic because you will be at level. Watch Hobbs. Taken close left. Yep. And then Taken's going right. Yep. Guardian going right, me. <laughs> Taken's going right as well. Sammy, let, get, let me get a quick cleanse right behind you. Right behind you. Thank you. You can go to them if you want. All right. Taken right. Taken right. Taken right. Trying to make sure I kill stalkers. I'm good, Sammy. I'm good. I'm good. I need a cleanse when you get it. I got knocked down toes. Back up, back up. He's here. Awesome. Yeah. Left keeper needs to die on me. Dead. Taken's crossing. Totem. Uh, we have worship, asc uh, ascendant, and stop. Stop. Okay. Versus stop. Overload. Knights up. Knights up mid. Knights, Overload. Knights down. Overload is there. Overload is to the left. Go. Be careful. Are we meeting top or cleanse? You're gonna come left now. I'm gonna just come left now. Take in top. Yeah, right. Get to me. Cleanse me before you get to them. Okay. Yep. Coming. Crossing. Give me now. you on top. Yeah. Got the hob. Let's go all Thank the way you. up. All the way up. A being the other hob. Other hob. Way. Careful. All the way up, Data. Just jump up. Yeah, come here. Okay. Uh, there's nades. Book keeper's dead on right. Pyramid <laughs> tower right. light. Pyramid tower light. You guys gotta eat heavy at this right now. Yeah. We have 20 seconds. We got time. Trying to stop stalkers. I'm at six. Uh, I'm coming to you, Semi. Yeah. Same. 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 And I shot my shelf. I'm getting red. Okay. Uh, okay just... No. Watch that. Watch that. Watch that. Middle. Darkness. Yep. Not middle. Oh, right side. Bottom middle. Bottom middle. Got him. I'm gonna burn. I think it was light, right? I can pick up. Res him and get the nut back to Dano. I have. I think it was light. If, if you're holding it. Uh, what was first? On. What was first? Uh, first right was here. stop, you said, right? First was stop. First was stop. Yes. Got it. Watch that. Careful with that. Finally, we come to the final encounter 
Rolk, Disciple of the Witness. If you're confused on how to get there, here's a quick clip. Oh no my shot. god, dog. I hate this game. We're morons. <laughs> There's no shot we didn't already do that. <laughs> we beat this raid, but we couldn't figure out how to open that door. That's the hardest part. <laughs> Team composition here depends on your damage strategy. My team utilized a weapon-based damage strategy with multiple rifts and wells, using stasis weapons and font of might. Other teams have been utilizing damage supers, stacking things like Nova Bomb, Thunder Crash, Quiver, and the like. Either strategy is viable, but I'm sure once the raid gets analyzed a bit more, which one ends up being the stronger one will be revealed. Otherwise, a couple of people on Trinity Ghoul will make very short work of the ads that spawn here, with the most threatening non-boss enemy being probably a Glyph Keeper or a Red Bar Taken Hobgoblin. Most workhorse legendary weapons will be fine here, but you might want to bring something with a little bit of range. Solar Resistance is likely to be the most important as Rolk's attacks are mainly solar. Be sure to bring a divinity to this fight as well, as the boss is quite mobile. In order to get close to Rolk, you need to push his shield back six times. You do this by getting emanating force and dunking it into one of six pillars with symbols on them. So, let's start from the top. To start the fight, you will bonk your face against his barrier. A giant crystal will appear above Rolk's head. Getting the killing blow on this crystal will give you leeching force for 45 seconds. There are two things to do with leeching force. Number one, turn it into emanating force, or number two, stand on the back center plate to activate two more crystals to the left and right of the boss. To turn leeching into emanating, you need to stand in Rolk's laser beam attack, which he fires off every so often. This is the buff used to progress the fight. Standing in this attack without leeching is a very bad idea. However, when no one has leeching force, the boss will summon another giant crystal for you to kill, which will again give you leeching force. If you lose force again after that, then you will wipe because the crystal will be immune. So we need a way to duplicate leeching force. This is where the second option comes in, the back center plate. Standing on this plate with leeching force will spawn two crystals near the boss. If two different players shoot one crystal each, the person with leeching force will lose it, and the two players who shot a crystal will both gain it. This is how to spread leeching force. If you have either buff and your timer runs out, you die. Let's talk about the symbols before any more force discussion. In front of you will be six small pillars, each with three symbols. Then, after you kill the Glyph Keepers, you will have three symbols appear on a bigger pillar on the left and right. Only the people with some sort of force buff can see the ones on the left, non-buffed can see the right. Of these three sets of two, one symbol will be common, like the previous encounter. The right side might be Earth, Enter, and Light. The left side sees Light, Worm, and Worship. The common one is Light. On the six small pillars, Two of them will have this common symbol, the other four will not. Now let's go back to the force buffs. So you have leeching force. You need to duplicate it to other people. So you do that. Now you have two leeching force people. Now my team did this one at a time, which is a lot slower, but it's a bit easier to keep track of. One person will jump into Rolk's laser and turn their leech into emanating force. The emanating player now needs to dunk their buff into one of the two small pillars that has that common symbol we just discussed. We had one player designating to doing the symbol and pillar callouts to limit the confusion, and because emanated players cannot see any of the small pillar symbols at all. After dunking their emanating buff successfully and thus getting rid of emanating force, we had the other player who is still leeching split their buff to two new people and had the cycle continue. As teams learn the fight more and more, you'll be able to ramp this to two dunkers at a time, making the fight go much faster. You'll have a leeching player split their buff to two people, 
then one of those two split it to two other people for a total of three. Then two of the three turn their buffs into emanating, dunk them into the two common symbol pillars, and then move on. Important to know that the position of the symbols on these small pillars does rotate after a dunk after a short time, so the symbol watcher needs to be looking out for the new positions. Other players simply need to be ready to break a crystal when a leeching force player calls for it. You can assign roles as to who is breaking crystals, but the situation is very fluid and you can always weave players in and out as needed. Assigning roles does make things a little more organized though. Otherwise, be killing enemies non-stop. You'll occasionally get a yellow bar ogre, be sure to kill it, and support teammates who are going in for dunks. You can also use Aeon Gloves here on the Ogre in order to spawn heavy ammo, which can be important. After the first three dunks, be on the lookout for Hobgoblins. They're red bar enemies, nothing too brutal, but it is very possible to die to them if you're not paying attention. Here is an example of reading symbol callouts. Yeah, left guy is still up. I just need okay, to right, yeah. Now, left and right crystals, please split. We're good. You want to get I'll, I'll, take, I'll take crystal. Middle, 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 middle. Taking laser. Nice. I need calls. Traveler, tower, Sabathun. Traveler, Traveler it is. Traveler it is. Um, close left. You have toast covered. You have toast covered. I'm all over it, baby. They ain't got. Swap yeah. gang. Swap gang. Ghoul gang, baby. Somebody left press though, please. Got it. Got it. Watch out. Hey, watch out. Watch out left. Okay. Uh, Nano, you're there. going close right. Close right. Got it. Watch out for Swap now. Swap now. Crystal shooter is perfect. Yeah, perfect. 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 DC is leeching. What's next? Laser. Left laser. laser. Nano, you're going mid left right after that. Alrighty. All right, CC on. After six successful dunks, you will be invited to Rolk's platform, where he will play a game of I'm gonna kick you, where the goal is for him to kick you. You do not want to be kicked because you will die. Rolk will roam the platform, performing a series of telegraphed attacks, including a dash attack and a giant laser beam attack that shoots out from multiple directions. Getting hit gives you stacks of pervading darkness, but unless you are getting hit by every single attack, you shouldn't have to worry about this until the final stand because it will fall off. Ideally, no one is getting hit by anything, and it's completely possible to take zero damage at all in this part of the encounter. After a dash attack, his glaive can be shot, and with enough damage, you will get leeching force, which can turn into emanating force by jumping into his laser attack. During this time, he will display one of four symbols, Pyramid, Darkness, Light, or Traveler, at the location of where the glaive was shot. If you are coming up the stairs, Traveler is to your immediate left, Light is to your immediate right, Pyramid is the opposite side left, and Darkness is opposite side right. Feel free to make your own callouts for this, we did close and far, you could do L1, R1, whatever works for you. The person with the force buff cannot see which symbol is being displayed. It needs to be told to them by someone without a force buff. So the flow of this is avoid dash attack, shoot glaive, jump into laser attack if buffed, make proper call out, and then dunk the buff. If you're dunking, make sure to watch out for any rolk attacks, and if you're not dunking, get away from where the dunker needs to go. If done correctly, Rolk will have a vulnerable spot somewhere on his body that must be shot. It'll either be his leg or his shoulder. It won't take a lot of damage to break it. Then, you must do this three more times for a total of four. In my opinion, it is a much better idea to try to do these one at a time than it is to try to have multiple people getting force buffs. It creates a much smoother experience when first learning, and while you do need to be somewhat quick here, with enough practice, this should flow fast enough on its own that you won't need to get too frantic about it. The thing to look out for here is accidentally getting a leeching buff while shooting his crit spot or any shadow thrall that might be spawning in. 
things like Bleak Watcher and Trinity Ghoul can trigger to the Glaive, giving you the buff if you got the final blow. Just make sure you're looking out to see if you have it. On the fourth dunk, his weak spot does not take critical damage, so everyone needs to dump a little bit of extra damage into that spot. If you aren't able to hit his weak spot four times in the time given, the damage phase is lost and you must start over. After this fourth break, he will get the big mad and become vulnerable to attack while he himself will also start violently attacking. He will combo his dash attack into his laser attack much faster and will chase people around the arena. It is at this time that you start damage. While you can survive basic attacks, standing in some sort of well or healing rift, his dash attack is very lethal and I would not stick around for it. The laser beam attack is survivable to a degree with healing, but the only time I'd recommend standing in it is if you're in a well, and even then, you might not be completely safe. Also note that during my time in contest mode, sometimes he would do a little teleport after his dash attack, which can alter the angle of his laser beam attack. This is not something I believe to be intended as it can create situations where you see the laser and think you're safe, but then he teleports and all of a sudden you're getting a mouthful of laser. That's just something to be on the lookout for. After he goes immune, you must leave this part of the arena and go back to the rally point. If you don't, his force field will literally shove you out and off of the arena. This process repeats itself until final stand. At final stand, Pervading Darkness will start back up and you will slowly gain stacks until you hit 10, where you will then die. This is why it is important to not be hit by attacks in Final Stand or close to Final Stand. If you are hit by an attack, that will give you additional stacks of darkness, which means you die faster. On Normal Mode, this Final Stand will be much more forgiving, but you should try to still probably save damage supers or big damage weapons for the moment Final Stand hits. Rolk will have a very short immunity window where he transitions to final stand. Wait for that to be over before you start damage. If you kill him before the darkness gets to you, then congratulations, you have finished the Vow of the Disciple raid. Thanks again to Bungie for another great raid experience. The disconnects and whatnot were obviously not very ideal, but the raid itself was very, very enjoyable. Thank you to everyone who supported me during the stream. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck in there. We like purple. All this together. Oh, there's purple up here? Oh. Perfect. Be careful. On, on Sammy, on Sammy, on Sammy. Clear comms, clear comms. Got staff. Right. Ready for you got pyramid back, pyramid back left. Sammy on you. Mm -hmm. are up. Coming for Sammy. Like... Yes, you played right in the back. Crit. Idiot. Kill Sammy. Going for Traveler. new staff. Kill Got Sammy. It. No, still, Traveler. still, not kill. Traveler. Uh, kill too, I'm like, what? Traveler's where again? Most left. That's what I thought. Dude. That's I do not have token. Semi. Who has oh, token? No, no, no. Oh my god. Semi has token. He has token. Hang on, trying it's to get the staff. It's not good. He's on data. Yeah. Laser. Where am I going? Traveler. Traveler. So right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Crit. Someone, someone hit that thing. I got it. I hit it. Traveler. See. Traveler close up again. Okay. I'm uh, waiting Joe's? for one. I'm waiting for one more laser. He's on you. <laughs> He's on you. Yeah. Getting the laser. Okay. Got it. Traveler spawning. Don't okay. Big crit. Big crit. Nice job. I'm gonna try and go over here. He took away my well. Go to the other one. That was I have, I have, I have. Relax, relax, damage. <clears throat> reloading, reloading. Empowering, empowering on me. Reloading. Still very good damage. Stop I dying. Have a res. I have a res. I'm stuck. 
That's it. That's it. Gray damage. 